This is bad comedy. Kingdom Galvatron arrived a few months ago and he's good. He's, he's real good, but is he as good as the original Galvatron released 35 years ago? Now, does that matter in any way? Does finding that out change anything? Absolutely not. So let's get into it. As ever, we'll use our patented Quintesson system, that's a five-pronged point system, to determine which tyrant comes out on top. Repugnus, you're on announcing duties for the category, so let's go! You're on a mission today, big man, I love it! Okay, round one, aesthetics. Galvatron's Generation 1 toy was released in 1986 and was based on early designs for the Transformers the movie, so he's quite different to the Galvatron we all know now. And I never had this toy when I was a kid, and the fact that this look continued on through the Marvel comics in the UK was lost on me, since I rarely dipped into them. So my love for this toy and the colour scheme only comes from really just how great they are, rather than any childhood nostalgia. I don't mind them being largely grey, considering he's essentially an upgraded Megatron, it kinda works. And it lets those splashes of colour really stand out. I love his big belt and that 70s sci-fi crud on all the stickers. And look at the fusion cannon, it's delightful. Kingdom Galvatron does a great job of just looking like Galvatron. I found that with various Kingdom and Studio Series toys of late, there's not a lot to complain about. They look great in both modes, but there's no surprises. It sounds stupid to complain about getting exactly what you want, but there's nothing to stop you in your tracks and go, oh, that's interesting. He is a beauty though, and I do wish, I wish the purple was a little bit bluer than what we've got here, but it really is great sculpting. Even the famous misassembled shoulders don't bother me. They're easy to fix, you just turn them around. Those pegs don't make me feel too sick. I, I could have done with without all this battle damage on it, but I don't find it as disgusting as some folks. With them side by side, they're both essentially nothing in their canon modes. You know, I know they're, they're supposed to be sort of futuristic canons, but at the same time, you don't really come to Galvatron for the alt mode, do you? I mean, I hope you don't, because they're kind of rubbish. Robot mode is everything. I'd say overall, I do prefer the colour scheme of the original toy, but the Kingdom sculpt is so well realised, it feels like a standout for the line, uh, for me at least. I, I did think if only there was a version of this toy in G1 Galvatron colours, and then Hasbro Pulse brought out exactly that, and it looks fucking horrible. So I had to go third party for that one. But I can't really blame this Kingdom release for that, so ultimately, aesthetics go to Kingdom Galvatron. Round two, features. Kingdom Galvatron comes with a few cool accessories. You can hang the Matrix on a chain around his neck, which I very much appreciate. He also has these two guns that resemble the ship from the movie, and you can snap those together if you're so inclined. I don't know if I'd include his fusion cannon as an accessory is kind of integral to Galvatron as his head or his bum, but it does look good. Aside of accessories, you've got pretty much the transformation, which is a category in itself, so back off. G1 Galvatron comes with this weird rifle. I do feel Galvatron coming with another gun in general is kind of pointless, considering he's already lugging a gun bigger than most characters on his arm, but it's there. On his back, we've got this switch that allows you to choose between three very strange noises. First we have this aggressive B sound. Second is this very funny furious chirp. And finally this raspy yelp. Now they are different, but not really enough to actually be worth it. My favourite is the chirping, it's sort of a hilarious, impotent rage just spewing from the boy. Of course, you can see, uh, pressing the button on his belt creates the sound, and his eyes light up, as does the light on the top of his head. And this isn't an official thing, but you can also stick the fusion cannon barrel on top of his head. It doesn't do anything, but it is funny. In cannon mode, pressing the button lights up the barrel as well, which is wonderful. And finally, you can transform the whole thing into this handheld blaster, which has its own trigger, same sounds and lights. Uh, it is kind of crap, but it's a feature. So in the face of all this, Kingdom has to concede, G1 takes this round. Round 3, Transformation. Time to lay down some very obvious thoughts here. So of course, Kingdom Galvatron's way more complex when it comes to transformation. Lots more moving parts, almost to the point where it's like, is this necessary to essentially get him lying down on his elbows? Still, it doesn't have the luxury of just plugging the cannon into his head, so there is that. It's still fun, it's a little fiddly at times, but there's enough there to keep you coming back. I do like that all his pieces fit onto the alt mode, even with space for the Matrix, so there's no loose ends, I love it. That can't be said for the G1 toy, you're kind of left with the gun and the laser connector after you're done, but there's so much fun in getting there, it's hard to stay angry. You can pretty much get in between modes within seconds, and there's a lot of very satisfying clicks while you do it, it's so chunky and tactile. 
Again, I didn't have this toy growing up. I had Ultra Magnus instead, who was the first Transformers character I remember having. It makes me wonder if I'd got Galvatron instead back then. Would I have the same weird obsession with that character? It doesn't matter anyway. For simplicity and the fun, G1 takes the transformation round. Round four, posability. Now you'd think this would just be a total steamroller of a win for Kingdom Galvatron, because just look at the G1 toy, it looks like a big chunk of ham, like Power Master Prime, but G1 Galvatron's got a surprising amount of articulation. We've got shoulders and a waist and elbows, we've got knees, some nice arm movement. It's genuinely surprising how much this guy can move. If he maybe had a moving neck and legs that bent at the hips, he'd pretty much be perfect. But look, Kingdom Galvatron is taking this round, but I just want you to know it was close. Kingdom does have a great range of movement and you can get some really good Galvatron-y poses out of him. He has a neck and he's not afraid to use it. Both feel and look great. Lots to experiment with, but Kingdom Galvatron does take the edge on this one, folks. And don't like that? You can go far on a railroad spike. Round five, fiddleability. This is that final, almost ambiguous round that factors in just how much fun these toys are to play with. How likely are you to take them down off the shelf and have on your desk for a day? So, like posability, it's close. G1 is so simple and quick to transform. Kingdom's got that range of interest and transformation tricks that add a little challenge. So I haven't had them both for a while now. Having them be part of my collection on different shelves that I pass by daily, I have to say I'm more inclined to mess around with G1 Galvatron. Those daft sounds, the gun mode that barely, barely passes even the lightest scrutiny. It's just a fun toy. And I think Kingdom Galvatron is great, but they don't come close to being that much of a joy to fiddle with. So G1 takes this one. And indeed G1 takes the contest. G1 Galvatron reigns supreme over this newcomer. Both are great, both are top-notch interpretations of Galvatron. Uh, I think you'd do well to check out either. But for me, the absolute legend, G1 Galvatron stays on top, non-stop. So that's it, another spectacularly unnecessary competition in the bag. Did you agree with the outcome? I'd love to hear about that. Leave a comment below and tell me exactly what you think. Don't hold back, I want to hear it. Feedback is the only way for me to grow as an artist, so I'd appreciate candor on this one. Did you mean any of that? <laughs> Fuck no!